Several years ago, I had the privilege of doing a guided meditation, the purpose of which was to find an animal guide. And this was something I was really looking forward to. I had taken a, a meditation with this person before, and they were terrific at it. And I had kind of assumed that what my animal guide was going to be was a hawk. I could see myself flying across the mountains and across the forests and seeing the big picture down below me, ready to spring down at any time and have something to eat. And if it wasn't going to be a hawk, I'd be happy with like a lion or something. So about 10 or 15 minutes into the meditation, I'm in my mind, I'm in a clearing in the, in the woods, and I hear a rustling. And I go, oh, here we go. Here comes the hawk. This is going to be great. And it clears and out waddles a raccoon. <laughs> and I go, really? <laughs> I thought it was going to be a hawk. And they, but this little raccoon walks up to me, and he has a little work bag. And I go, what? And so he opens up the work bag, and he pulls out a sandwich. Now, this is all a guided meditation. And, and it's a, a wax paper sandwich, you know, a sandwich wrapped in wax paper. And he opens up, and it's cut in half, and he gives me half of it. And I go, well, that's, that's very kind of him, you know. And, and he's got these clever little hands. And out of the work bag, he takes a... Uh, a, a couple of knives and a piece of wood, and we, he wants me to start whittling with him. And, I, and so we're carving away, making little figures, and, and it's like, you know, I can get behind this, you know, I you know, make a lot of puppets and things, you know, it's like, this is, this is pretty cool, okay, you know, and it's not a hawk, but you know, he's a nice guy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So last year, I got a call from a tenant. My wife and I own a cottage that backs up into a woods and a park inside the Beltway here. And the tenant says, you know, Michael, uh, I think I got a raccoon in my, uh, in my ceiling. And I go, well, my animal guy. <laughs> you know? and, uh, and so I said, well, how do you know? And she says, because there's a hole beside the cottage. And I saw a raccoon climb down into it. I hear something in the ceiling. I go, all right, all right. So I call up a trapper. And the trapper comes and he says, oh yeah, and he has a have a heart trap, which is about this big. And, and he says, I'm gonna put in some peanut butter and some apples, they love that stuff. And so the next day he calls me back and he says, you wanna see your raccoon? And I go, yeah, sure. So I come down and he's got it. And he, I said, well, what do you do? And he says, well, I take it about 50 miles up into Frederick where I live and I let it go into a national park up there. And I go, oh, okay, well, that seems very humane. And so we backfill the hole and then about a week later, my tenant calls back and says, you know, I got another raccoon in the ceiling. And I go, ah, well, but besides taking the raccoon away, he also took $350 away. So I figured, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy my own have a heart trap. And so I do, and you know, they're a wonderfully designed piece of equipment. They're about this long, about this high, and about this wide. They weigh about 15 pounds, and they're very well designed because they have a door that holds up, and when the weight of the animal gets on this little platform where the food is, the door just goes boom, and the animal is safe, and I'm safe, which is kind of big for me. So <laughs> I set the trap, and the next day I go back, and there I got a raccoon. This is great, and it's really, a wonderful experience in a way to be that close to a wild animal you know it's like and the animal actually is really timid He's looking at me like this and I'm going no oh, don't worry I'm not gonna hurt you I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm gonna take you to a new place where it's nice and, and I go okay and the only little problem you have when you pick it up is when they pick it up they get a little freaked out and they start running back whoa 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 so I I put it in my truck and I take it to the park and it, I open it up and it runs in, and goes about 20 or 30 feet and it stops and turns and takes a look at me and then waddles off, you know, waddle runs. And so I figure, okay, I've taken care of this. And then a couple of days later, I get a call from the tender, got another raccoon. <laughs> so over the next year, I trapped not one or two or three, but 21 <laughs> raccoons. <laughs> Now, somebody here would probably say, Michael, you just trapped the same raccoon 21 times. <laughs> and I go, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> 19 of them were really beautiful, docile animals, you know? <laughs> they were really 
sweet, and they just sit there really timidly looking at you. But two of them look like they've been in a bar fight <laughs> with scars, and they were trying to get at me. And it was like, oh, okay. And then after a while, I started taking pictures of each one of them just to, ke to keep a record. And they all look different. And after a while, I started putting a little bit of white spray paint on their tails just to make sure. And I kept taking them <laughs> farther and farther and farther away. Well, after a year of this, I said, well, you know, you know <laughs> maybe you ought to wise up, Michael. And so what I did was I dug a trench around the, the cottage about this deep, and I put animal wire <laughs> all the way around it. Duh, you know, what an, what an idea, stop them from coming in. And, uh, and I backfilled it all up, and about a week later, I went down to the place, and sure enough, one of the raccoons had dug about this far, but they hadn't gotten to the bottom of the wire. They had just dug that far. And Okay, so I backfilled it, and then about a week later, I come back, and they had dug about this far, but then they had given up. And over the last year, nobody's come back. No raccoons have come back. I guess it got on the raccoon listserv that this, <laughs> that this was a waste of time. Go bother somebody else. So... About six weeks ago, I go down to this property. We do a lot of storage for my company down there. And I have like a, just a normal street van that's all open. And I pile all the big boxes into it and the sound systems in it. And it's all open. And I, I can just reach back into the back of the thing and get something if I want to. It's all open. And I'm coming up over the bridge of East West Highway and 410 coming towards Route 1 right at the top of the bridge. And all of a sudden, the biggest raccoon I have ever seen <laughs> jumps out of the back of the truck, onto the passenger seat, and up onto the dashboard. And he goes, Aah! and I go, Aah! it's a sound that is 10,000 years old of human DNA. When trapped with a wild animal, I slam on the brakes, throw it into park, and I dive out into traffic on the East West Highway. I'd rather be hit by a car than mauled by my animal guide. So then I go, oh, but now, now what do I do? I got a raccoon, the biggest raccoon I've ever seen in my truck. And I go, okay, so I open up the back of the truck and I pull out one of the big boxes so he can get out of the way, get out. And I don't open the, the, uh, the driver's door because, you know, I don't want him to get hit by a car or anything. And so... <laughs> And so I open up the two side doors and the passenger door, and I have a mic stand, and I'm sitting there. And I open it all the way up to six feet, and I'm poking around, and traffic just keeps coming by, and everybody's going, what the hell's with that guy? About 10 minutes later, this guy stops and comes up, and he wants to help me, a nicest young guy. And he, and he thinks that, that I'm trying to get the boxes back in the truck, and I need help. And I go, yeah, nah. <laughs> And I go, it's a raccoon. And he goes, okay. And I go, raccoon. He goes, okay. And I go, come here. <laughs> so I, I hand him the microphone stand. And he's sitting there poking. Oh, Mbache! Yeah, Mbache! <laughs> and I go, oh. So it takes us about five or six more minutes to finally poke and prod. And the raccoon finally jumps out of the side of the truck, jumps up onto the railing, and just like all 21 of the other ones, he turns around to take one last look at me. And I, in my mind, I know what he's saying. He's saying, I left your little present on the dashboard. And I go, what? And he jumps off the bridge and into a tree and he's gone. So I go, what? So I go up to the, look in the dashboard and, yeah, he had taken a dump on my dashboard. And I go, you know, I'm getting pretty comfortable with that. <laughs> he shares his food, he's clever with his hands, and he has a great sense of humor. <laughs> Thank you.